and a very busy day at Pelletera and Heredia. The Alicante lawyers, uh, Pedro, is uh, elsewhere, uh, but uh, Ignacio is with us, which is always good. Good to see you. Yes, good afternoon, Carl. How's things? Well, pretty busy, as you could imagine yeah. now. is This period of the time is always... Uh, overwhelming, isn't it? Now, Pedro dragged away last minute, so you're going to have to do things solo today. But you're an, you're an old hand at this. Yeah, no problem, no problem. No problem at all. No no problem. Problem at all. Um, there is the uh, webinar coming up later, of course, yeah. uh, with uh, Pelletier and Heredia with the Alicante Lawyers. Uh, .es. All about, um, if I can get it right and said in the correct way, Moody's been schooling me, Occupas, Occupas. squatters. Yeah? yeah, yeah, that's correct. We're going to talk in this webinar today at 5.30 Spanish time. Well, Madrid time. Um, we, we're talking about the squatters, what to do in case this happens to you, what is a criminal action, a civil action, what is the best course of action, um, tips and advice by, by Pedro, myself, and Michael Davis from Almeria, Mojaca. I noticed some in- insurance companies are actually offering a, a service, an insurance service, if, mm. if this happens to you, if your uh, property uh, ends up with squatters. So I, I, I guess uh, the legal process might not be mm. straightforward. Mm. In, in Spain, it seems to be quite difficult to get people out. Well, it's, it's, it's hard to answer uh, so general because we okay. have different type of procedures. So, to, not to go into much detail, technical, uh, you've got the option to do the criminal. Um, then you need to make differences, whether is your main property or what we call it, uh, home, no, or, holiday or, home, or, se- or second or, home, or, second home mm-hmm. or the other option is whether you've got an investment. And then, and, and you could start the so action. So depending on what you're using the property for could yes. depend on how the you action. can manage it legally. So yes. I, I would imagine in most cases that uh, Bay Radio listeners would perhaps be those with a second home in Spain, for instance. Right. Well, second home is considered as well as home, obviously. It's not an investment property, which it goes through a different road, mm-hmm. you know. But uh, some people, it's, it's hard to advise so general. What would you do in this specific case? Uh, I need to know the grounds or the details to say, well, I will do call the Wadia and they will come straight away and then you start a criminal action. Now, I don't think the criminal action will be best because of the lengthy procedure, you know, but uh, sometimes uh, you need to prove so much because in dubio pro reo, that means that in case of any doubt, always there is a presumption, presumption, presumption. of innocence. Mm-hmm. So probably that's going to drag it on too long. Uh, does it take a while? To, I mean, obviously, getting appeal. things to court takes a while anyway, doesn't it? So you've got quite a long gap before you can get to court. And as you said, then the appeal process. Appeal also. process. So you could even probably, I'm, I'm not trying to scare people, but we could even be facing probably more than a year. Okay. You know? That's probably a little bit better than I was thinking. To well, be I was going to say too, but you, it depends on the appeal, depends on that and the other. That's with regards to the criminal side. If you say, they broke into my property, mm-hmm. this is my home or even second home, and therefore um, I want to denounce them through the guardia, through the okay. court, to take them out, basically. And is that the best way to go about that particular case? Perhaps? I wouldn't do probably criminal. Um, but it, it depends on a lot of factors. Right. Uh, it's hard to, to, hard to it's say hard without to say specific circumstances. Specific, mm. You know, probably a criminal, I will only recommend on a specific cases, especially if you're not in a rush, you know, especially mm-hmm. if you're not in a rush. But, but I guess, uh, imagine all the time that this goes on, the people are still there. Yeah. That's correct. So you're and you cannot unable to use the property um, legally, uh, which some people find a bit confusing. But legally, you can't just get in there and kick them out. Yeah, that's correct. That is doing taking justice by yourself is not allowed. For which you can be prosecuted. Which you, yeah, I know it sounds all crazy yeah, because, but, I, but that's that's the way it is. Exactly the same as uh, if you are just cutting off the electricity or the water, or whatever. That means duress, basically, and they could denounce you as well because of your certain pressure um, to do something before a trial. So, so, so hang on. So, th- if you've got the water or the electricity on direct debit, you are therefore paying that, and there's somebody right. squatting in your house, Until and you're not allowed to stop it. You're not allowed to stop it because, well, you, if you stop it, you could be facing see, a procedure between from the other party, from mm-hmm. the occupa, right, from the squatter, against you, saying that they're exerting pressure on you. Um, so, so it's, that's scary. It's the, yeah, but let me just give you a little bit more of light here. If you go down on the civil. 
right. civil road. We, we were just talking about the criminal. Mm-hmm. If we go civil, that there is being a new act that was 2018. And basically, they try to do like recovering possession, basically, like taking uh, the action is about taking possession back from the property. And uh, that's the fastest way to do it. They've got only five days, so you serve the claim. Okay, that sounds better. They've got five days to contest. If it's not consistent, their opposition, therefore, automatically, the court orders uh, an eviction order. With that in hand, when that happens, you don't even need to wait. If they want to appeal, you don't even need you don't even need to wait 20 working days until it's solid, that sentence. Uh, and you can enforce it straight away. But now, how, how do you enforce that? Who does that? The police? No, we, we as lawyers enforce, as the court, to mm-hmm. enforce that sentence. And the court, through the police, gives you an eviction I see. Uh, day for the police to go there right. and, and take him out. Now... The problem here, Carl, is that nothing is as fast as you and me would like. Of That's course. the thing. But that will be the fastest road I will probably recommend. Now, you've got different options as well, because I always say in general, but this is just trying to protect your property. If you have an alarm system or even your mobile or, uh, you know, and if it does happen, because the police could stop them if they find them straight away doing so. So it's like infraganti, we call it, I, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. They, they, they are allowed to kick him out straight away. But no, they're staying there for much, more than X amount of if hours. If you only find out after a, a while. You know, yeah, okay. because it could be an argument. And the whole, re- the whole case here is discussing whether you're right or you're wrong. You know, mm. it's like, uh, okay, let's have a trial. Once you have the trial... And they will be out. So you, you, I know a number of people do have that. They actually have the alarms where you can see, or even your mobile. On, yeah. On, yeah, on the mobile, you can see whether you people say, are, are your you door, the police. in the house, whatever. So uh, that that's that's probably the best point to try and catch people. I, I think that's that's the best investment. Investment. It doesn't right. matter that it needs to be with the gun company. Probably you have you buy your own cameras. Uh, Lots of options. There. there you have a lot of options, but that really stops because let's say you've got an alarm. And it just calls your mobile. Let's say you don't pay uh, uh, all these kind of alarm system. It's just your own alarm system. And you ring the police because mm-hmm. that's all they do. The, the, the people from the alarms, what they do is ring the police and the police goes there. So let's say the alarm system is beeping and uh, you're being informed by the telephone through the IT system and you ring the police. The police goes there. And pretty much, if they, they normally the police will take probably fifteen minutes to go to. Indeed, to, but it's actually at the time yeah. it's happening, so yeah. that can be dealt that, with immediately. That can be immediately. Yeah. So that's why I think it's so important. And I'm not promoting here uh, uh, any company, any that company sells at all. No, I know, what I'm yeah. saying is everybody has their own choice, and everybody could do their cheapest way, which Prevention. is which is your cameras. You mm. buy the cameras, and that's you do. Um, and then when it starts beeping, then the police arrives, and they could kick them out, you know, basically straight away. Okay, that you sounds know? pretty good. So that's the best way. I The problem in general, Carl, is that people are on holidays, don't know anything. Uh, they don't have cameras. They don't, you know, they just, and when they just move to their property, they're already there. Talking to Ignacio from AlicanteLawyers.es today about occupas or squatters, as uh, we've uh, been hearing this afternoon. Uh, one way to deal with the uh, situation, if it's your second home or your second property, you, were, uh, you mentioned at the outset then that uh, we might uh, have a situation where squatters are uh, in uh, a property that somebody's bought to rent. Mm-hmm. Um, so, say, an Airbnb or similar mm-hmm. company, something like that. And that's a slightly different situation. Well, um, uh, well, probably these people have paid, so I it's see. like initially. a tenant initially, and after that they stop paying or just uh, decide not to leave the property. The fact is similar, but it's not your main property, it's not your house, it's not your main property, it's just your investment property. Uh, the only difference, Carl, you will see here, are you entitled to a victim? Of course. Would it probably go through a different process? Yes, because of a different type of property. But the bottom line is that you will evict, at the end of the day, that person anyway. Now, the law in 2018 changed to this clause that is a bit more 
express, we call it express eviction, you know, but it's not that fast as we all would like, like two days. Faster than it might have been otherwise. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it's not like if somebody stole your car and your police will get it back for you. It's still property, you see, so I can't yeah. quite see why there's a big difference there, but there yeah, is, obviously. There is, yeah. there is. Well, th- there is, and, it, and I don't want to get too much into legal here, but the, the Constitution uh, says that everybody should have a property, a uh, uh, um, what they call it like a fair property, you know, the right to have a property. And therefore, the only objection here, Carl, that happens, the only thing that happens is that uh, you need to go through a procedure and the procedure is not fast enough to your stress. You're back to, well, the stress levels, but certainly you're back to something where, say, perhaps somebody's bought this property as, as, as an investment to, you know, to make to make money so that they can live off that. Uh, uh, that, that and, and then there's somebody there who's not paying. You're, yeah. you're in a very difficult situation. That's a difficult situation. I agree. And the only problem I could blame is that the procedures are not fast enough as the criminals. Because if, if somebody does a crime, which this could be treated as a crime, as I said, this could go, a break-in is a crime in Spain, or just taking over an investment property is a crime as well. Now, what's going to happen? It's going to take two years probably because you can start appealing and appealing and then in the meantime, somebody's leaving their property. So you could choose having the other option, which is a civil action. And the civil action might go much faster. Both cases that we've talked about seems that the civil way is the better way to go for mm. most cases. Mm. I agree. I agree. I mean, the criminal is an option, but you always need to discuss it with your lawyer because we need to know where we are. I mean, are we in the Denia jurisdiction? Are we in the Tarvieja jurisdiction? Uh, where are we? How far does the court go in different cases? It's not the same one, one court, courtroom than the other. Um, and I don't see many benefits on the criminal except principles because you say, no, you took over... You are going to be considered a criminal. You're going to have a prison sentence. Uh, and then you'll have criminal records. Plus, you'll have to pay. And then you will, re- I, I will repossess eventually because the court will order exactly the same. But the landlord only wants it back as soon as possible. And sometimes people are prepared to say, let's give up. You know, let's reach an agreement and go. These people who are always trying to do this kind of investment on I rent, I pay the first month, and then I stop paying. Mm-hmm. Then I do it again with a different landlord. Then I do it again. That's considered to be a crime as well because that's fraud. The only thing is you need to prove that you're doing it that way. So, I mean, the bottom line here, Carl, is are you going to be able to get an, an eviction order? Yes. Now, how fast is it going to be? Difficult that's to that's say. difficult to say depending on the case. There are ways around it as well to try to see what is the best cause of action, you know. Uh, but that's always for them to discuss it with a lawyer. And again, I, I'll come back to each particular individual case. Now, we do know that there are people who you can engage who aren't lawyers uh, to try and help you get your property back. And uh, they, they work in various different ways. There are the thugs who will just go in and, you know, uh, or there are the others who kind of uh, play the squatters at their own game yeah. and go in and squat. That, and, yeah. I mean, either way, you end up spending quite a bit of yes. money and it's not quite a legal process. Correct. Uh, you've got the legal way, which is hiring the lawyers and going through the courts. Some people just hire these companies that their job is to take them out one way or the other. Now, it is their problem if they do any illegal things and they are facing probably some charges if they do so, so but that's their responsibility. As, as the landlord, you could end up with the, being prosecuted for, for something that might happen in that situation. Uh, yeah, at the, at the end of the day, depending on what your contract says, which mm. I don't know what they will be signing, um, you could be in the middle of a, of a mess, a messy situation, you know, uh, say, but you'll have to discuss it. What are the services? Uh, if the services are just uh, convincing or what are they saying? You know, that's, that's, that's the legal. How, how are they going to do it? <laughs> yeah. How are they going to do it? But, um, but yes, a lot of people use that as well. And the, the, the situation that they cannot afford, as you say, I'm paying for a mortgage. Um, I cannot afford. It's like people sometimes, you know, these things happen. Some people might even 
speak to their friends and go there and talk and things get hot and you don't know what ends up happening, you know? Mm. Um, so sometimes nothing happens. Sometimes they could ring the police, the police gets in the middle. So it's a very subjective call. It's, it's very hard to, to, to tell you exactly because it all depends on facts and evidence. Facts and evidence. The, if there are evidence of certain things, then you could be in trouble. So, yeah, the, the person who's trying to get their property back, ultimately, even if you go through one of these companies, which on the face of it seems straightforward and yeah. relatively legal, yeah. you could still end up facing you charges. Could all, yeah, I agree. You could always have an issue, you know. Uh, I've been dealing with different cases and and... And it's very specific to advise on every th single case, Carl. Of it's, course. The, the, the circumstances delicate. are different. Yeah. So it's very hard delicate. To and, generalize. And, yeah. Um, but yes, probably um, I, I'm just um, the High Court in Madrid, is the criminal court in the High Court in Madrid. Uh, one of the, of the guys who is from Alicante is Vicente Magro. He wrote a book about Ocupas and what to do in this mm -hmm. case. It's a thick one. It's more for lawyers than for probably. Uh, the the layman. because it's yeah it's, <laughs> yeah it's hard to understand you know it's very legal, but uh, he he's pushing very much for a very express um, way of faster way to get people you out. know like two mm -hmm. days or things like that you know because it shouldn't be it, it's just a system it's yeah. like nowadays if you, you for example the criminal thing about. Um, Domestic violence now in Spain is very very fast, well, and I remember the you know the legislation coming up and going through, and and now things are dealt with very very quickly. So you know everybody, we do know that things take a long time to become law uh, and take a long time to get through the courts. Mm -hmm. But um, something uh, akin to uh, what they did with domestic violence would be great. At the moment, it's not in place, so it's a very difficult situation if you end up uh, with the squatters, isn't it? Uh, uh, but um, I think back to your original statement, which was do invest in some kind of alarm system, uh, because if you can catch people in the act and get in contact with the police straight away, that's got to be the best way to, uh, Correct. to deal Correct. with people. And, and and when people say, well, uh, is it safe to invest in Spain? Obviously, it is, it is safe. I mean, you live here. Uh, I do. Um, you know, and probably we, you never we, had problems. We did hear uh, quite a bit about squatters a few years back. Um, and that, you know, that was obviously tainting the, 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 what people were thinking about the housing market mm. here in Spain. Mm. I mean, it, it seems to have gone, gone away a bit uh, mm. since 2018, I think, you know, when the, there was that, that slight change in legislation. It started with the repossession properties from the banks, you yes. know? And uh, and these... following on from the uh, financial crisis, and Correct. there were lots of empty properties around, um, which were owned by the banks. And, yeah, uh, and, yeah, yeah, and and they started taking over. Um, but that's that's a different that's a different thing, you know. Um, sometimes people are professionals of squatters, so mm -hmm. professional squatters, I would say, uh, and this is what is a crime as well, you know. Uh, I'm in part of a neighbourhood. Uh, which actually in the WhatsApp group, they say, oh, somebody broke in. The, the important thing, another good piece of advice called neighbours. Mm -hmm. Neighbours neighbor watch. always watch out. And uh, they call the police straight away. And that's like the message we all have. If you see something dodgy or something, they ring your bell and you see, because they try, you know, they, they, they do shopping and they, they go and mock the houses and they say, oh, this one doesn't leave anybody here. Mm -hmm. Or they're going to jump or they, they've got their strategies, you know. So I heard on this group, so oh, there is somebody coming out on the area and trying to ring. So they ring one day, they ring another one. So they know. And they just straight away just jump in. They've got a false tenancy agreement. So when the police comes, they just show the tenancy. Well, the, the, the doesn't, it's not actual real. So it's not. So it's, it's, oh, wow. Yeah, but, but you know, you cannot kick them out because there is a legal dispute. Yeah. Uh, this uh, phrase, prof professional squatters, professional, it's, yeah. it's quite worrying. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, there, there are cases like this. Yeah, there are. And uh, that's why I'm saying cameras is good. Neighbors are good. Um and then uh, always have a handy number to ring the ward, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, because they're very fast, very efficient, and probably in 10 minutes they're in your house. Okay. Um, but, but the bottom line, we are heading into a faster, uh, like, interdict, or, uh, you know, like a 
we're going, heading in the right direction and hopefully soon there'll be a quicker process for that, yeah? I'm hoping on that, right. you know, I'm hoping. OK, we're talking to uh, Ignacio from uh, alicantelawyers.es at uh, Pelta and Radio this afternoon. We've heard some bits about the golden visa scheme. Uh, first of all, of course, that Spain were going to cancel it. Now we understand um, that Spain's government still isn't sure how it can cancel the golden visa scheme uh, through uh, property investment. Uh, this is two months ago that they first did that yeah. and and so what is it they're not sure about how do they why do they not know how to well, stop it i i think what they're trying to find is a way forward i mean they did order uh, a report uh, to one of the ministries to 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 understand what impact the golden visa has uh, inflating prices, which, to be honest, I don't really think is a bonus. I mean, you're buying a property worth more than 500, then that qualifies. I don't really think uh, is inflating property uh, because of that, because that's, you know, it's just, there is no cases like 490,000, but because of golden visa, we'll make it 500. Mm-hmm. Uh, pff, not, not really. I don't, I don't, I don't see that as a reason, but they are trying to find that option and the only thing it could happen here, and it's a politic approach here, Carl, is that they remove the requirement of the property and you could still get a golden visa based on investment, like investment funds, for example. If you invest in money, a million euros, not 500, into Spanish bond, basically, uh, umbrellas, uh, then you qualify. Now, that still gets a good part because one, you do an investment. Mm-hmm. Two, hopefully you will get a return. And three, you could cancel any time. And you don't really need to commit yourself on paying transfer tax, et cetera, et cetera. I'm trying... So yeah. that should be a bit better for, for, for the people that can afford it. That, that's correct. That, the only problem is is double. I mean, 500 gets into mm-hmm. double, then you probably would like to buy a property and then you need to have more money aside... Uh, which is a million to be able to do it. Um, yeah. And I don't even want to talk into Carl the <laughs> two million debt. That, that's another option you have as well. But the, okay, the, why we but, I guess this was all meant to be part of the uh, uh, latest suelo, the, the 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 law that was going to go through uh, regulating the use and valuation of land. And now mm. that's not got the support that the government needs to be able mm. to get it through. So that that's why it's fallen by the wayside. The golden visa scheme. Meanwhile, people are still applying yes. and they're still happening quite quickly. Yeah, actually, uh, we are having a lot of golden visa applications, and we are submitting. Uh, a lot of them, a lot of them, because whoever made their mind and they want to go for it, I always say, just go ahead. There is no guarantee when the law is going to change. I mean, actually, in our website, we advise people to say, do it quickly or just find a different alternative, like mm. non-lucrative visa or any other. And um, But yet, yeah, once you have all the paperwork called, it will only take 20 working days maximum. That's amazing. Isn't it? I mean, considering some, you know, Con- some considering things Spain, take a very long time. The administration time. in Spain, yeah. yeah. It's one of the fastest things, actually. Um, and uh, and that still ca- carries on, which I don't know when and if they're going to amend their requirement for property. Because um, would they put it one million? You, you were telling me probably Portugal is bringing it back. So Yeah, I mean, that's certainly something that um, we've yeah. been hearing about. So, yeah, it's a little bit strange, isn't it? But yeah. so the, yeah, the amendment to the bill could still happen could at some point happen, in, yeah. in Spain, which yeah. means it might go through. But, yeah, in the meantime, um, they're still available. You can still get one. And, uh, yeah, if you, can, if you can manage it, yeah. by all means, yeah. uh, get it yeah. sorted out sooner rather than later. And, of course, you guys are still uh, dealing with applications right now. And that's the reason probably why they approach us on the TV that's... That's the program. I was going to bring that uh, mm. up because you've been on national TV mm. uh, uh, recently. Normally, it's Moody following you about. But, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, this time, it was the national TV cameras. Uh, how did that come about? Yeah, actually, they approached us on a Friday and they said they want to do an interview. And uh, Lupe answered the telephone and we said, well, we'll g- they needed to go and visit a client's house as well just for sale. Um, so it took us, well, we did quite good. It wasn't a Monday. We managed to do everything on a Monday and they do the interviews because they try to get all different sides. For example, who supports that, who thinks it's for money laundering because in the, in the TV, some people were supporting that the golden visa was no good because it doesn't give you good enough time to do all the homework for money laundering, which to be honest, 
I disagree because banks straight away. The first thing they do. The first thing they do, I do normally every week in my bank brings me because my client accounts got some money from clients and they want to know where their money's coming from. But the client always has available and shows where is that money coming from. So I don't really think the reason is money laundering. Is money laundering. Mm. Uh, I really think it's a politic approach, trying to make it like mm, bring the message that is inflating the, 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 the prices, which is not really the case. I don't know whether it's a little bit more because there were a lot of Russians. Well, we did see that um, it was a lot of Russians and Chinese that were buying property. So, you know, so there was concern uh, about that. Um, um, and perhaps that wasn't the intention when they first started the gold visa scheme. But at the um, moment, we've got a lot of Americans and British. We do. So that's what I'm saying. Is, is it about nationality? I don't think so. Um, I don't know. Is 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 a good it's a good question here, Carl. Uh, what 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 they're doing? What is going to happen? But nevertheless, if anybody is interested to do it, I always say just do it as soon as possible to protect yourself with that application. Mm -hmm. And renewing the Golden Visa, I don't think, will be a problem. Yeah, because that would be something that you might worry about. If they're going to cancel it, what happens yeah. once you get one and then it comes to renewal? But uh, from everything that we've seen and understood, it, th th that will be uh, still continued when you come to renewals. It will be honoured. I, I, I find it hard to believe that is restrict restrictive uh, to rights. So if you've been granted one right, mm. uh, you'll carry on having Difficult that. to take it away. Difficult to take it away. That's that was like uh, applying for the TIA before Brexit. Indeed, you know, and um, actually, I'm I'm dealing now with a case, an interesting case. The the lawyer of state appealed one of our cases for TIAs, and he and uh, the, the court in Alicante is very much in our favour. But recently, I have a high court now uh, discrediting that and saying, yeah, it's all about the insurance call. Is going back to the Brexit is. Do you have an insurance policy before Brexit? So uh, medical insurance, you mean? Yes, correct. right. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, mean, I, mean, I mean, it's strange that the High Court would be getting involved in something like this, is it not? Yeah, the High Court gets because I. You first go to a strong area. Mm -hmm. You present all paperwork. The strong area for an office says no. I'm sorry, you don't have. You never had insurance in place because, but there is not really a law that says you should have it as long as you just land. Uh, after three months when you apply for your residency, you should have your insurance. It doesn't say, it says you should have an insurance when you apply for residency, but you could apply within three, six, eight. Like, you know, a lot of Brits didn't apply to start with mm -hmm. and they did it at the very end before Brexit. Mm -hmm. So some people didn't do it before the 31st of December 2020 and they submitted everything, the application after the 2020. So now the lawyer of state, well, they always did, and they always fail. But now they took it to a high appeal in, in I think it was Valencia, Valencia Court, Administrative mm -hmm. Court. And I just got recently this sentence saying um, pretty much disagreeing with what the Alicante Court says. Mm. And it's an that. argument because... And then we're going to take it to the High Court in Madrid. So I'm taking that one. That particular case was the only one that we had a problem. We're taking that to Madrid because I was I was talking to Carmen saying, no, this cannot be right. I mean, where in the law states that as soon as you land after three months, you should have a medical insurance. And they don't require that to Europeans. And that's the thing. They yeah. don't... Rec so you it's, say... It's that grey area where, obviously, this didn't exist before Brexit and now it exists because of... And maybe all the loopholes weren't, weren't um, nailed down. I well, don't know. I'll tell you something. If you're a European and, and you apply for residencia, for green, you could do it any time. Mm. But you're, already, you're, you're entitled to medical, so and if you're a part of the EU. Yes. Well, that's a different story. If you, if you already have the, the SIP card from the EU that covers... Um, in, in Spain, fine. But the, the problem is, is about the issue of the date, date yeah. of issue. Mm -hmm. Now, we never had a problem with Europeans. And British, British before Brexit, for us, no are, problem there, are, right, are yeah. Europeans. But what happened after Brexit? We become part of that third country status. Correct. And, and now, 
they are being difficult. They're being very square, you know? Mm. And so far, so good. We did cover a lot of, I mean, all the sentence. But this one, that they dare to appeal it in Valencia, for some reasons, you know, interpretation of law and, yeah. and different. They say, well, um, you should have, before Brexit, the insurance. Yeah. Because you were resident before you made... And and then we say, hold on a minute, where is it written it's down? It's not written it's not down. Written down. It's not in the detail. And Difficult they just one. interpret it called generally. So once you get that, yeah, but at some point, somebody's going to have to make the decision. A judge is going to have to make the decision, yeah. and then you have the precedent, and then we'll be okay again. That's, <laughs> that, Each time, yeah, yeah, it's because yeah. I think a lot of these things are because <laughs> the the things were not in the detail yeah. in that particular part of the agreement. So each part of it, every time it comes to it, has to be trial through the courts until the point where you get a judge to go, no, it means this and, mm. and then hopefully mm. that will stick rather than be appealed. But difficult one in it, Matthew. It, it's difficult because um, as I said um, we, we started through the Alicante court, mm. then if the lawyer of a state doesn't appeal, then we're happy. And we were happy. But now for some reason he's taking it further. And there's like scoring one goal, two goals, who won, two won. And then now I'm saying, no, I'm not stopping here. I'm going to Madrid because it's just for president. That's where you, you have to go, yeah. And yeah. We, we still get these clients and these people who unfortunately didn't apply for it. Mm. And now let's say you find somebody who didn't apply for the TA and they want to do it, but the insurance is not in place because they will do it now. Wouldn't They, they don't have it from before Brexit. Indeed. Now, so there's another technicality that is a technicality, needs to be dealt with. correct? All right, Matthew, thank you very much indeed. Plenty more always on the website, alicantilawyers.es. And uh, if there's anything you'd like to know more about, then you can get in contact via the website or indeed uh, by contacting us here at Bay Radio and our usual uh, numbers on the WhatsApp at 6844558444, email studio at bayradio.fm. You'll be glad to know because uh, well, uh, Matthew has the TV screen behind him uh, on his even at the end of all that. The guy who scored the own goal scored at the end of the game in added time. So Klaus Gersula uh, is now uh, actually uh, a happy bunny again because it finished 2-2 between Croatia and Albania this all afternoon. Right. OK, thanks very much, Ignacio. OK, we'll see you this afternoon. We'll catch up on the <laughs> webinar. Yeah. Uh, that's coming up at what time on, on the website? 5.30 in half an hour. We're having online streaming. And on the 28th call, we've got one for an auction of a property in a real case. Looking forward to that. That'll be interesting. Alicantilawyers.es.